and I sprayed the detangler. And as I was brushing through her hair, I realized, oh, I don't think the detangler fully absorbed in because I see these little white dots. And then I brushed through it again and I realized the white dots aren't moving, but there's mm. black dots that are moving. And mm. I realized it was lice. And all of a sudden, I drop the, 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 the comb on the floor and I uh -huh. scream because I realized oh, no. we've been sharing a hairbrush for oh, five days. No. Life can feel like a roller coaster, but in the beauty and the chaos, if you look for it, life is full of love, joy, and kindness. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Season four is When the Going Gets Tough with Bianca Juarez Oltoff. Come join us. Access more. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Bianca. And today we are talking about not quitting. Yes. Don't quit. <laughs> Bianca, I kind of wanted to start off with a story today. Yeah. About wanting to quit <laughs> in my own life. And, you know, I've always been a very career driven person. I've been working since I was five years old. Wow. And when I had kids, it was a real challenge for me. Mm. And it's not like I wanted to quit being a mom. I love being a mom, but the transition was quite difficult for me, having kids in my early 20s and again, having an entire career before kids. So I often didn't feel like what I was doing as a mom was valuable enough, even though I wanted to be there for my kids and pour into my kids and and be their mom. But there were days when I just, I wish I had my work to go back and almost hide in my work because being a mom, it, 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 it can feel like the most unappreciative thing in the world. <laughs> it's like when I'm at work, you have people, or hopefully, but I had people that would be like, great day, Candace. Good job, <laughs> Candace. Well done. That was fantastic. But when you're a mom and you're changing diapers and cleaning the house and you're cooking meals or you're homeschooling and you're whatever it is, you're teaching Nobody's thanking you. Nobody. Your kids aren't saying like, thanks, mom. You're amazing. Good job today. And if you have kids like that, God bless you. I hope you do. But <laughs> it feels like this thankless job at times. And so I would want to, I wish that I had had work so I could go run mm. and hide. It's like some days I just wanted to quit because I, yeah, I just didn't feel appreciated. And so my husband who played professional hockey for so many years, Val, when he'd be on a road trip, and then he would come back home after seven days. I would, I would just hand him the kids like here. <laughs> I'm, I'm done <laughs> here. I am out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to the mall. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go get my nails done. I mean, something just because I guess I needed the break, but there was also this place that just mm -hmm. felt like, I don't even know if I can do this anymore. I don't know that I'm fulfilling my, my, my purpose or even desires. And is this all my life is? And I know that sounds so down on moms and I don't ever want that to come across because being a mom is one of the greatest things of my life, mm -hmm. but it was a difficult transition for yeah. me. And I often wanted to quit and give up, but of course I'm not going to give up on my kids. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt like that? I yes. mean, are there days that you want to quit? I think what you're doing right now is normalizing what everyone feels at a certain moment. We are all going to have moments when we feel like this is so overwhelming and it can be, I'm overwhelmed as a mom or I'm overwhelmed in my job or I'm overwhelmed as a student. I'm overwhelmed as a teenager, whatever it is, mm -hmm. there's going to be moments we feel overwhelmed. So I want to kind of like normalize the feeling of wanting to quit. It's very, very normal. And so this season, our intent is that we remind ourselves gritty people don't quit. Grit don't quit. Mm -hmm. And we can build resilience. And that's what we want to take a look at. And, you know, uh, I, I had these moments, but this phrase that my husband told me a long time ago, you can quit. It's just not going to be today. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give us some handles on like, we can feel the feelings. Let's mm -hmm. identify the feelings and let's learn how to walk through them to push through and to persevere. So I'm excited. 
I love that. It reminds me of something my husband would always say to my kids, our kids, when the answer would be no, instead of always being the parent that just said no, he would always say yes, but not today. Yeah, exactly. Yes, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> can I have that candy? Yes, but not, not today. today. <laughs> you can have it tomorrow. So you're, you're a stepmom. I, I would love to hear about your stepchildren. And I think that there are a lot of people, mm. a lot of listeners that will relate to yeah. being a step parent. I know I, I have a lot of very close friends of mine that are step parents. And how has that journey changed you? I think when we talk about quitting <laughs> and being a step parent, there's a lot of moments that are synonymous with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I came into Park and Ryan's life when they were three and five, and uh, I got married to my husband when they were five and seven. So I have been, and in their teen years up until like, you know, Parker's in college and Ryan's in her senior year of high school, but we had the kids full time through high school. And so um, there was so many times that I wanted to quit and just say, this is for the birds. You know, mm -hmm. there were moments where I'm like, I did not bring you into this world, but child, I will take you out. You know, if you don't <laughs> yes. get an alignment, you know, yes. so there's a lot of those moments. I call those moments a flesh flash. That's where I forget that I'm saved and my flesh comes out and I'm like right. about to right. beat somebody. To I love Jesus, but I curse a little. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I've had those moments, but um, I would say, early on, uh, like you, I was a working mom and I vividly remember this one time I, Ryan was about five years old at, and we were newly married. We were living mm -hmm. in an apartment. I was working for an anti-human trafficking organization. I was working, I mean, probably 60 hours a week. Plus my husband was on staff at a church. So we had this very full ministry life. I had a full travel and work life and it was just a lot. And I was thrust into it. I was single. I was living in LA. I had complete autonomy. And then I became a mom and a wife and a pastor's wife. And there's all this pressure that comes around that. And, mm -hmm. you know, a chief storyteller for A21, like there was a lot that was going on. And so we began to like organize our life very systematically. And so I would Matt would take care of breakfast. I would take care of the kids. I would lay out their clothes. I would do Ryan's hair. Everything was very regimented. My husband is of German descent and they do everything on the order on the time, you know, and he doesn't talk like that. But when I'm mad at him, I think that's the voice that he sounds like, right? So anyway, um, we had a system. We had a system. About how is this mm -hmm. gonna work? But what happens when your system breaks? So I was, uh, this was after breakfast. We were cleaning up. I called Ryan to come into the bathroom. And I do the same thing that I did every day. I made a straight line down the middle of her head and was gonna put her hair in pigtails. I sprayed detangler through her gorgeous, like big, thick, dark, curly locks. And I sprayed the detangler. And as I was brushing through her hair, I realized, oh, I don't think the detangler fully absorbed in because I see these little white dots. And then I brushed through it again and I realized the white dots aren't moving, but there's mm. black dots that are moving. And mm. I realized it was lice. Oh. So in this moment, oh. I have to pause and give some necessary details. Uh -huh. This happened to be a day where we were working on a global rebrand for our entire organization. I've been working on this rebrand for six months. I'm talking internal communication, external communication, website, font, color, social media, everything. This was the pitch, Candace. And all of a sudden, I drop the, 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 the comb on the floor and I scream. Uh -huh. Matt runs over. He said, what happened? I was like, oh my gosh, Ryan has lies. Well, sweet little Ryan had no idea what lice was, but she saw my face. My eyes were the size of saucers. I begin to cry. She's crying because I realized oh, no. we've been sharing a hairbrush for oh, five days. No. I have chills from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. And I'm like, sweet Jesus, what are we going to do here? I'm crying. Ryan's crying. Matt is going between a, a crying wife and a crying child. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? He's like, I'm going to go to the store and get lice treatment. And I was like, you have to get two because it's one for me and one for Ryan. Forget it, get three because it just doesn't work. Like I have to go to work. <laughs> now keep in mind, I'm fully dressed. My makeup's on, my hair is done. Like I was ready for this pitch. He comes back, he is washing our hair. He's doing the treatments. My shirt that I so ironed and was ready is now mm -hmm. completely soaked and wrinkled. It is hot mess express. And wow. I stand up and I look at my husband and I'm like, I quit. I quit this job. Mm. I quit this life. I didn't sign up for this it's not supposed to be that hard. It's not supposed to be this hard. My husband, this was the first time that he told me this phrase and I've never forgot it. And he said, you can quit, but you're not quitting today. I have the kids go change your shirt and go to this rebrand. So um, I 
made him check my hair twice. And he said that there was nothing there. He didn't even see eggs. He didn't see critters. He didn't see anything. But I was like, I swear they're there. Of course. I swear, I'm like, just shave of, my head. Of okay, course. bit my head right now. <laughs> like, I'm not doing this. And uh, I, I ended up pulling my hair back in a tight bun and wearing a hat just in case I was contagious with like, SARS or something. I just thought like, I'm going to die. This right, is horrible. Right. Um, I go to the rebrand and it was an epic failure. Candace, it oh. was an epic failure. Like they hated everything. And I remember walking to my car after work, taking off my hat and pounding my, my steering wheel of the car. And I'm like, God, this is not my life. I'm not supposed to be a wife. I'm not supposed to be a mom. I'm not supposed to be here. I didn't sign up for any of this stuff. Quitting is normal. Wanting to quit mm -hmm. is normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal, but we have to decide what our decision and our reaction is going to be to those moments where you have a legitimate reason to want to quit. You can quit, but you can't quit today. So fast forward six months, I'm still in the organization. I have my hair, praise the Lord. And you know, we're still did doing the whole mom get thing. Did you ever the lice? Did you? Um, you know what? I, I swear that I did. My husband says, I did not see one egg. I didn't see one critter, okay. I didn't see any of that stuff. I don't believe him. I don't believe him because I was like <laughs> scratching my head. I'm like, no, I have lice. I know it. Okay. I know it. He swears I didn't. I thought I did. Um, you don't see the why in those moments. Right. The why sometimes doesn't come to the top until you have like your emotions calmed. So the next morning I said, we are going to redo this rebrand. And mm -hmm. um, six months later, uh, the rebrand was approved, but that wasn't the why. The why wasn't a new website, a new color scheme mm -hmm. and font. It, the why came when I, for the very first time, our office was in California and still is, A21 is located in multiple places, but I worked at the California office, but I received an email from a coworker in Greece who knew I was coming there for a training. And she said, you won't believe this. We have a girl in our custody. We think that she's a trafficking survivor, but we need a translator. We can't get a translator who speaks Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Now, listen, mm -hmm. Kenneth, I'm brown and I can order and go to the bathroom, <laughs> but to speak about illegal ramifications of entry into the European Union without proper documentation, um, I'm not your girl. But what came out of my mouth was, yes, I could totally do this. Long story short, I sat across from a girl who had been trafficked and was being smuggled into the European Union through Greece and was intercepted by our team and local police. We were able to reunite her with her family and as she came into A21's care, she was in the, in the restoration home for a second as we were connecting her with family. And I remember having a conversation with her, again, botched and broken Spanish. Mm. But I told her, tu eres mi razón. You are my reason. You are the reason why I was never supposed to give up. And sometimes we don't see the reason until we give ourselves no excuses not to give up. Yeah. And you could look back at your kids now when they were like young and Max, you want to spank the next week. And then you have <laughs> Natasha where you're like, whose child are you? And you're losing your mind. Right. And you're a homeschool mom. And you're just like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Yeah. You can look at your life now and say, my kids were my reason. And I'm so grateful. I didn't quit when I had legitimate reasons not to continue on. Mm -hmm. but I'm so glad they were my why. And I want people to identify your why now, because mm -hmm. you will have moments where you fall. You will have moments mm -hmm. where you want to quit. But you have to know your why because your why is the thing that roots you and grounds you to keep going when yep. everything else says run. Yes, obviously, I'm not going to give up on my children, <laughs> but to look back now and see the fruit of yes. my intentional parenting and my time home with them and at the time giving up my own personal wants and desires mm -hmm. of what I considered was fulfillment to pour and nurture into my kids and to train them up in the Lord. I see the fruit of that now. They're yeah. all in their 20s. And I have children, by the grace of God, who love us mm -hmm. and actually want to hang out with us and want to be with us that we have really close relationships yeah. with and who do love the Lord. I have a question for you. What? Do you think that they would have been the people that they are today had you not made all the sacrifices that you did early on? That's a good question, but I don't know that I can take responsibility in that sense. But can you take a fraction of seeing that your sacrifices yes. have impacted their life? And when we get to look at you and we get to look at your beautiful family, and I just want someone to yeah. hold on to and know that like their sacrifices are going to make a difference. Yes. And your sacrifices have made a difference in the life, in the lives of your children. 
Yes, thank you. I think it's hard for me to admit at times because it <laughs> sounds self-serving, but there certainly were sacrifices mm -hmm. along the way. And 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 yes, I I can look at the the hard parts of parenting now mm. that were yeah very difficult and not pleasant at the time, but realize that if we didn't make those choices, yeah. that they might not be the people they are today. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here. If you've been listening a while, you probably know my show is part of a larger podcast network called Access More. And I love being a part of Access More because it's not just any podcast network. It's an entire library of faith-based content from some of today's most inspiring faith leaders and speakers. Imagine a place where you can deep dive into meaningful, real conversations all centered around faith. Well, that's what Access More offers. The best part? Access More is a listener-funded nonprofit platform. This means that you can be a part of making meaningful conversations and reaching the hearts of millions. It's about creating a space to explore genuine and sometimes vulnerable topics, all grounded in faith. If you're interested in joining that mission, you can donate today at accessmore.com forward slash donate. And even if you're not in a place to donate, I encourage you to check out this library of content and discover new shows at accessmore.com. I think um, what we're seeing is two people telling stories of overcoming. So we're on mm -hmm. the other side and being like, mm -hmm. look, God did it. Look at God. Right. I kind of want to talk about some unfinished stories mm -hmm. because sometimes it's really easy to talk about things in retrospect. Oh, God did it. What a testimony. But there's people right now that are in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of it. I have an unfinished story that I'm mm -hmm. believing God to transform, but I don't want to just root this in us telling personal stories. And I'm not expecting you to come over here and confess to, to everyone on the podcast. <laughs> this is the unfinished side. So how about we just root this in some theology? Great. I love, um, I've mentioned that Paul is my Bible boyfriend. My husband's okay with me having a crush on a dead guy. <laughs> but um, I love, and Paul the Apostle, we reread so much of his life and his story in the book of Acts. And we're going to spend much more time on his personal story uh, later on in this season because there's going to be moments when we are waiting. There's going to be moments where we want to hold on to the promise of God, but we're in the middle. There's going to be moments where we are disillusioned, we're disappointed, we're mm -hmm. despairing and depressed. There just is. That doesn't mean that we don't have faith. It doesn't mean that we're bad Christians. No, it just means that this is life. And I want to give like a, a, a sneak peek or an appetizer into a moment in Paul's life that really transformed his resilience, transformed him into the gritty gangster that he is. Now, side note, I think it's important to note that the word resilient, resilient or resilience and grit is not in scripture, but we do have a theological framework and we use words like perseverance and endurance. Mm -hmm. And we see this hallmark in the life of Paul the Apostle. So uh, again, we'll talk about this and unpack this a little bit more. I love giving hints for people that they just stay with us the entire season. You're going to want to listen to every episode. So I'm going to just drop little breadcrumbs. And, okay. Um, so okay. Paul the Apostle was promised by God that he was going to go to Rome. He didn't know how he was going to get there, but he knew that he was going to go to Rome. Mm -hmm. Well, what's in Rome? Rome is the most powerful country in the world with the most powerful leader in the world. And Paul knew because God told him that he was gonna have an audience with, with a position of prominence and a man of power. And that was Caesar. So how Paul was gonna get to Rome, we don't know, but he's gonna get there. Well, Paul is put into kangaroo court. He's falsely tried. And what people didn't know was, dang, they messed with the wrong man because Paul was a Jew, but he was also a Roman citizen. What did that mean? Hey, you hail from the greatest country in the known world during that time. And as a Roman citizen, you had rights to appeal to Caesar. So he was put in this kangaroo court, falsely accused. And he said, well, I appeal to Caesar. So they said, oh, you want to go to Caesar? To Caesar, you shall go. They put him on a ship. But during at sea, there's a storm. In the middle of the storm, an angel appears to Paul and says, you will go to Rome. The exact phrasing. I love this in, in, in exact phrasing in ESV, the English Standard Version, NIV, New International Version, is it has to happen. Girl, that is a word for somebody out there. Somebody needs to hold on and say to themselves, is that proper grammar? I don't know. <laughs> say yeah. to themselves, say yeah. to themselves. Okay, right. They have to say to themselves, it has to happen. Mm -hmm. 
If God has given you a promise, now there's someone out there that's like, I don't know what my promise in life is. You do, baby, you do, because the scripture is full of them. That God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. That there's a plan and purpose for your life. Plans for good and not of evil. Those are promises that the word has for us. In mm -hmm. fact, Paul says that every promise in the Lord is yes and amen. The Lord is giving you promises. But some people are sleeping on their promises because God hasn't done it. He said, oh, you know what? Maybe God didn't speak to me. It was a bad burrito I ate last night. No, it's like false hope. No, 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 no. You have to hold on to the words that God told Paul and the angel came and told Paul, it has to happen. Okay, but I'm gonna stop that. It's incredible, but I immediately am thinking of, okay, this actually did happen, but I'm thinking of Sarah in the Bible when she like, wanted a child so yes. badly. Yes. And she eventually got one. Yes. At 80. Yes. Okay, but what about the woman that's listening that's like, I'm so desperately praying for a husband and I've not been brought that person mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm hanging on to this, God. I'm clinging to this and mm -hmm. I'm praying for this every day. But what about when it might not be what God has for them, the promise that they want? Mm. So let's talk about promises and let's talk about desires. Okay. So a promise from God would be like a Sarah where uh, there was a character in the Bible that showed up at their house and said, you know, your wife, Sarah is going to have a child. And what did she do? She laughed. That's why the baby's name was Isaac, which means laughter. Mm -hmm. um, and God was faithful to that. What about Moses? Moses was told that he was going to go to the promised land. He was promised mm -hmm. the promised land. Are you familiar with what happens to Moses? Mm -hmm. Does he get into the promised land? He looked, he, he looked at it. He got to look at it. Isn't that sad? The Lord didn't keep his promise then. <laughs> Hold up, flip it and reverse it. Mm, you want to hear something fascinating, interesting? The Mount of Transfiguration in the New Testament, Jesus takes Peter, John, and Peter, John, who's the other one? His three, his core, Peter, J Peter James, and John. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Peter, James, and John, he takes him to the Mount of Transfiguration and he reveals himself. And who appears next to Jesus? Elijah and Moses. That's interesting. Where's the Mount of Transfiguration? The promised land. Mm. Uh, somebody Whoa. out there is going to throw a praise <laughs> hanky right now because we think that the Lord has not kept his promise. Yeah. But just, it, just because it doesn't happen the way that you think doesn't mean that the Lord won't do it. So right. now let's pause. If God gave you a promise... It will happen. Right. It just won't look like the way you think. Now, what happens to desires versus promises? I have a desire to be 110 pounds. That's not a promise. The Lord, the Lord didn't tell me you're going to look like a toothpick. I, I could want a thigh gap. I've wanted a thigh gap my whole life. I'm Latina. It's not going to happen. Right. That's a desire. That's not a promise. But the Lord has promised me health. Mm. So. How do we identify between a promise and a desire? Mm. So um, if the Lord has promised you a spouse, I'm going to believe that with you. I'm going to stand, in with, stand with you and have faith for that. But we have to be careful and seek the Lord. Lord, is this a desire or is this a promise? Mm. That's the hard part. That is the hard part, mm -hmm. but that's such a good mm -hmm. explanation of Thank the you. difference between those two. Thank you. And I, I don't want to dismiss any pain of desire. And you wanted something? Of what course What does scripture not. also say? Scripture also says that the Lord gives us the, the what? The desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. If it's in alignment with his will, James right. 4 says you have not because you ask not. Right. And when you ask, you ask amiss. So somebody out there is like praying for an old rich husband that's about to kick the bucket. And so <laughs> she inherits his will. You know what I'm saying? Like you ask, baby, but you that's for the wrong thing, you know? Right. There's people that are like, Lord, send me a husband, send me a man, send me a good man. And there's a good man that you just don't have eyes for. Maybe that's not the Lord not answering you. That's because you picky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yes. We need to have some honest, yeah. healthy conversations. Yeah. Is that yeah. a desire or is that God's promise? So what happens when what God has said doesn't look like what we see? Somebody out there is praying for their wayward child to come back mm -hmm. and they're strung out mm -hmm. on drugs and they are so far from the Lord. What happens in that moment? What happens when the Lord has given you a vision of a marriage that honors God and your husband has walked out on you? What do you do in those moments? We hold on to faith and we believe. I'm, someone's going to throw a brick at my head when I say this, but another Pauline passage, all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. 
for those that love the Lord. Yeah. The scripture does not say that all things work together for our desire. God's right. going to get the glory through our story. Even if there's pain that's involved. Um, I can't wait to unpack this because ooh, girl, it's going to be a good one. Cause Paul on his way to Rome ends up on an Island called Malta. I actually preach this message at your church and I'm going to, I'm not going to preach it. I'm not going to preach on the podcast, but I can't help it sometimes. You already are. And I love <laughs> every word of it. <laughs> Look at this is the power of preaching. Some of the best messages are preached through life experiences. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. we're over here just telling on ourselves and being honest with all the podcast listeners. But Paul, Paul on his way to Rome ends up at a place called Malta. You know what Malta means? What? Refuge. Mm -hmm. In the middle of a storm, the Lord sends Paul a refuge. Come on, somebody. Somebody right now is in the storm of their life. And this podcast is a refuge because there's ministry for you to do on Malta. And that's all I'm going to say about mm -hmm. it. People got to come back for more. Come back for more. <laughs> Okay. You heard it. You have to come back next week. <laughs> but before we end this episode, yes. we are going to take a listener question. Love it. This is from Jenny. She says, as a woman without children, will I ever feel fulfilled in my life if I'm not fulfilling my purpose as a woman? Ooh. Okay. We're going to take a step back here because I hear a couple of things in this question from Jenny. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't agree in that your purpose as a woman is having children. So I think that having children is this great, wonderful responsibility and mm. a privilege uh, and a blessing that we, that we have. But womanhood, being a woman, is so much more than having children. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I want to speak to Jenny and anyone who's like Jenny who doesn't have biological children. I don't have biological children. I have the fortunate privilege of raising two children that are not my own, but I want to speak to Jenny and let her know as someone who does not have biological children, my purpose is not thwarted. Mm. My value is not less. And my calling isn't halted because I haven't birthed a child. Now I want to speak to the person that's about to throw some stones, who's going to bring a scripture. And we just, you know, we just got to pray for those internet theologians they love to throw stones. <laughs> the Bible says that women shall be saved through childbearing. Amazing. But one woman by the name of Mary birthed a man named Jesus who gave me purpose, whether or not I have a child or not. Amen. I do believe in that scripture. And I'm so grateful for the fruit of her womb. But I'm saved because of a woman who bore Christ. Amen. And I want us non-bio moms to hold on to that. So let's, let's speak about mothering. Okay. So mm -hmm. maybe not birthing. Let's speak about mothering. I had two children in my life that I did not birth, but I mother. I had, my mom was diagnosed with uh, brain cancer when my siblings were very young. And so I did not birth them, but I mothered them. I served in youth ministry at my local church for mm -hmm. eight years. I did not birth those children, but I mothered them. The church that not God has placed in my care. I did not birth these people, but I'm a spiritual mother. I think all women have the ability to be nurturing, which Someone's going to come and hit me with gender stereotypes. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I want to talk about that. I want to have conversations above it. You could be a man in nurturing, but stereotypically, scientifically, historically, women are more nurturing than men. Yep. I know gender stereotypes, boop, 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 whatever. We can have a conversation over food and wine later about that. What I want to speak about is just data. Women have a more nurturing side. Yep. So you don't have to birth children to be nurturing, to pour into the next generation, to raise a world changers. And- for any, can, can I have a caveat and speak about step parenting for a second? Yes, please. Okay. Listen, 50% of marriages are ending in divorce. I'm so sorry. That's sad. It's horrible. I know I'm not trying to gloss over it. There's a lot of pain and shame and weight that comes with that. But 70% of people who go through divorce will get remarried. And do you know what the remarrying percentage or the marriage percentage drops down to in divorce? 26% will get will remain married, meaning 74% of those marriages end up in divorce. There's a higher percentage of people who get remarried and end up divorced afterwards. Mm. And you want to know the number one issue? Well, I'll give you the top two. Stepchildren? Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me speak to people who are step parents, have step parents, or will be a step parent. 
I did not see, I did not read any helpful or hopeful books about step parenting when my husband and I were dating. I was like, can I see myself as a stepmom? How does this work out? I'm not too sure. So I read a book and it was so depressing. I threw the book across the living room in dramatic form because I'm Latina who was raised on novellas with my grandmother. And I was like, I hate this. I threw the book and I was like, yeah. no way, no way. I was like, you know what? The Bible has an answer for everything. And people were like, oh, you don't see step parenting in the Bible. Well, listen, I'm a word nerd. I never went to seminary, but I do love me some Jesus in the Bible. So I started to dig. And you want to know something? We have an Old Testament and a New Testament reference for step parenting. One good, one bad. One caused wars, one changed the world. Step parenting. In the Old Testament, a woman that we've already referenced, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sarah wanted a baby, wanted a baby, wanted a baby. And in their ignorance and arrogance, uh, they said, well, my husband is going to have a child one way or the other. And her husband, listen, Old Testament times, I don't understand it. I don't excuse it, but whatever. He slept with his maidservant mm -hmm. and he had a child. Well, Sarah was so mad, so hurt, so frustrated of her stepchild because Sarah was the stepmom to Ishmael that she banished her husband's son and baby mama and mm -hmm. out to the backside of the desert. And what happened? The animosity and the hatred that Sarah birth caused wars for future generations. In the New Testament, we have a stepdaddy. You know who stepdaddy is? Joseph, who was the stepdaddy to Jesus. Joseph changed, a, raised a world changer. Mm -hmm. So I read that and I said, oh, listen here, Bianca, you have a choice. If you step into this marriage without a good mindset, you will cause wars for generations or you can walk in and raise some world changers. So I said, I have a choice here. I'm saying yes to this man. I'm saying yes to his children. And I'm saying yes to raise these children like they're my own. Now, my children say that they're step Mexican because they're raised by a Latina mom and I don't mess around. <laughs> I do not mess around. I, I, I have never spanked them. My parents beat Satan out of me. Thank you, Jesus. I've never spanked them, but they do know I am the first one to love mm -hmm. them and the first one to tell them your breath stank, your booty smells, <laughs> like you need Jesus. Well, let me help you with your assignments. I'd like to say that I helped Parker get an A on his report on J Steve Jobs in the fourth grade, basically because I did it for him, but I was like, you are a world changer and I will not let you fail, okay? Did I do his homework for him? Probably, but Jesus forgave me. And you wanna know something? Now he's on a football scholarship to Drake University, go Bulldogs. And I'd like to say that he, this man is going to change the world. And I had to, mm. I, I had a little mark on this man's life. And that's a choice that we get as step parents. So you don't have to be a mama to mother. That is a good word. <laughs> I have nothing to follow that up with. That was just a good word. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So then I have to ask you, is there a woman in your life that maybe not has had biological children, but she's thriving in her life right now? Yes. One of my very close friends, Kira Stokes, anyone who follows me knows Kira's my fitness trainer. <laughs> She's amazing and incredible. But Kira and her husband, Gary, do not have children and I think are past the age of bearing mm -hmm. children. And she is thriving, thriving mm -hmm. in her purpose in life, which is all about helping people in the world of fitness. She's incredible. Together, they have so much joy, mm -hmm. so much love, but she really pours herself and dedicates her time and energy into helping people be healthy yeah. and have movement and exercise, which we're actually going to be talking about that mm -hmm. in episodes of how much that helps with not just our physical bodies, but mental health yeah. and helping us fight through the hard stuff. Yeah. But Kira is just this great example to me who is thriving in her purpose a woman that, that doesn't have children and, and she's, she's living her best she's life. She's living her best life. Yeah. So to yeah. answer the question, like, is, is our life less fulfilled or do we not have purpose without having children? As someone who doesn't, I could say with authority, I'm, I'm living the life that the Lord has called me to live and I'm incredibly mm -hmm. blessed and life is what you make of it. And it's a decision that I've made, but I believe that our joy comes through the decisions that we stand behind. So to those who do not have children, may we mother those in our lives, or I like yeah. to say smother, because I'm a stepmom, stepmother, <laughs> so I like to smother. May we like smother that. those in our lives and raise some world changers. Yes. Jenny, I hope that those answers helped you out 
a bit today. Bianca and I want you to know that you can make it through any hard season. We have something for you called What to Do in the Waiting, and you can download it for free at Candice.com. Check the show notes too, because we'll have it linked there on YouTube and on the Access More page. In our next conversation, we want to be your cheerleaders. So join us to hear an episode we're calling You Can Do Hard Things. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. I make these videos just for you. So let me know in the comments if there's someone else you'd like me to interview. Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved.